No, 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 no. This ain't no shotgun. Don't lie to me. Oh, uh, what are you talking about? You said that you wanted a shotgun, so I gave you a shotgun. Yes, you idiot. I want a shotgun. This just isn't, this isn't big or chungus enough to be a reasonable shotgun. I need bigger chungus. Well, I, I don't really know how to help you. I mean, I guess I can try to find something that's, that's bigger than this. <clears throat> Okay, supervisor, here's a shotgun that's the biggest shotgun that I could possibly find in the world. Oh my god, are you not listening to me? I said I want big chungus. This is so reasonably sad. You know what? No. I want to do something right. You got to do it yourself. <sighs> I'm going on break. <laughs> chungus! That's the kind of big chungus I need. It's so big and so chungus that I was only able to paint one half of it before I ran out of paint. What? So, the Doomlands, the judge. They put the article in there for some reason, but everybody's made fun of that, so I'm not going to run the joke on for longer than it needs to go. This is the Doomlands Judge. Holy Lord, this blaster is absolutely insane. And it's not hard to see why. I mean, I have nothing to compare this to right now. If we bring in the Lawbringer from earlier, my gosh, it's the same length but it's like three times as wide and as tall. And I did genuinely try to paint this, but I physically couldn't. I ran out of hand paints and it wouldn't have even looked like this. It was supposed to be black with a bunch of orange accents on it, but I couldn't open it because this shell was so thick that the screws, the screwdriver would not go all the way in to get to the screw holes. I mean, you look at it from the front. It's absolute lunacy. This is a 10-shot, 3-dart shotgun. This was the first thing to ever come out that was like it. I mean, I mean, if you don't count the sledgefire, because that was a 3-dart shotgun. But this one used a cylinder for the 3 darts, and it, it used a cylinder proudly. This literally looks like a jet engine that came from a Looney Tunes cartoon. And as soon as this blaster was unveiled, everybody laughed at it. Because look at it! Look at this! How are you supposed to take this seriously? This was basically what the product picture looked like. But like, my- look at this! How is anybody supposed to take that seriously? You just can't. You can't take this seriously. It doesn't matter who you are. This is not a blaster you take seriously. This is a blaster you use when you are in a mood. But with all that said, let's actually talk about the design for a while. Because I'm gonna flip this over because this is just confusing to look at. So, ah, that's a bit more pleasant to look at. This design legitimately has a lot more thought put into it than you would first imagine. It's got a lot of details, like this sort of grill thing right here literally makes making it look like an engine and all these little tubes and stuff with actual like little bolt connectors holding them down. It's like, wow, they actually put a lot more effort into this than I originally thought. Especially like if you look up here under this clear piece of plastic, you can see details under details. My favorite detail, however, has to be this entire black section of plastic that runs along the bottom and the back of the blaster. It looks very cool. This triangular texture engraved into the shell really adds a lot of detail that makes this blaster look a lot more robust and industrial. It's a very specific detail that you really gotta see in real life, but when you see it, it works tremendously. If we go up to the front, you can see all these little greebling details they even put into the drum. I mean, look at how much detail is in there. Despite all the dead space, they managed to make this work because of just all of the details they shoved into this shell. It, I mean, it looks really good, and it really just nails down the sort of robust jet engine feel this blaster gives off, which seriously makes me think that that was the intention. Turn a jet engine into a blaster. That's the vibe. Also, this is kind of a subjective point, but I really love the fact they put the Nerf logo right on the front. That's just, that's a nice little detail. They, I, I like that. I like that a lot, actually. That's a cool place to put a logo. But I think I've gone on long enough about the details. Let's talk about the ergonomics. That grip, oh boy, Doomland's grips are known for one thing, being very, very, very uncomfortable. No, 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 no. Very forgiving. Big, super comfortable, super forgiving. How does that work? While the grip adds a lot of details, none of them actually get in the way because they're all restricted in the shell or barely peek out of the shell just to provide extra grip onto the sides of your hand, which your fingers are going to be touching, which ends up actually adding to the comfort rather than taking away from it. The whole front and back of the grips are super well filleted and still have that same triangle design I was going over earlier. That's on the front and on the back, so you have a very nice handhold. It also kind of has this 
bridge here, which guides your hand right where it needs to go to line up with the triggers. You don't have the problem the Flip 16 has where your hand rides up too far. No, no, no. They put design effort into this, and that is really good. And the trigger pull feels weird, but that's because every time you pull the trigger, there's a little piece that takes that trigger pull all the way, all the way, all the way to there. Observe, I'm pulling the trigger now. <laughs> but the trigger is clicky when you actually go to fire it. The foregrip is this big pop handle over here. It actually works pretty good. Even though it's not very big, it makes up for that by being pretty wide. So you do actually have a pretty big space to put your hand on, as well as this ridge over here giving you a place to put your thumb and the tips of your fingers to rest on without overlapping and going up onto the blaster itself. The prime feels really dumb. The first half feels good, but then you reach this part where it gets very difficult, and then it's smooth again. And then pushing it forward, it kind of ratchets back up into place, which makes sense because it has to rotate the, the chungus. All the chungus has to turn with every prime. So in general, the ergonomics of this blaster are a lot more forgiving than you would expect considering how ridiculous this blaster is. Now let's talk about the functionality and where this review starts to die. So essentially to operate this blaster, you pull it back, you push it forward, and you fire once. No slam fire. And here's the stupid part. You got 10 cylinders, but only nine of them are ever accessible. So you have to load this cylinder or this one. I can't remember which way it actually turns. You have to load whichever cylinder is next to this one, then prime it. So that, that cylinder is the one covered up, then you can load the one that was covered up. That's the only way to fully load this blaster because you're not going to turn this drum without priming and firing it. So the whole point of Springer blasters is to have a stealthy blaster that you don't have to rev flywheels for. And having to prime it and fire it once just to load the dang thing kind of removes the whole purpose of having the mechanism be like that. So. I don't understand what they were going for here. Now for the part that I've been waiting for. I call this segment, Loading the Judge with Tessera. Unedited. So, so how, have, how has your day been, everybody? How have your days been? Oh, good. I'm glad, you're, I'm glad your days have at least been good so far. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm really sorry to hear that, actually. Well, maybe it'll work better the next time. Oh, well, hopefully it'll work better the third time. I mean, come on, how does- how many times does that have to happen in a row? Well, at least the gas cap didn't fall off. Sucks that your car exploded, though. Sucks that it burnt down the entire gas station. I mean, that's not really a common occurrence, but I can definitely relate because I saw that happen a while ago. It was, it was a real disaster. Um, but, uh, yeah, hopefully it won't happen again. I'm really sorry about that. Oh, you got the car fixed. Okay, good. Good. Oh, but you have to pay for the SUV that was sitting next to your car. Oh, that's expensive. All right, we're loaded. Time for the firing demo. I don't have many comments to put. Oh, uh, yeah, firing demo it is. I'm surprised how many darts actually went in. So. Yeah, I'm not gonna flip this one. That's just a little bit too much chungus for me to flip confidently. What do I think of the Doomlands Judge? This thing is an absolute waste of time, and I absolutely love it. It is just so big for absolutely no reason other than to give off a mood. I mean, if you look at the cylinder, you can clearly see they could have crammed twice, if not three times as many darts into this, but they said, no, 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 the chungus is what matters. And to a lot of people, that's probably gonna be an immediate pass just because it's not practical. But quite frankly, I think it's just fine to have big, dumb, fun blasters like this in the hobby that really aren't trying to be anything practical. They're just trying to 
give off a fun mood and be enjoyable to play with. And that's kind of what makes Nerf fun in the first place, because not a lot of other companies try to do this. And so despite the popular reception and the fact that this thing was ranked pretty low on my 100 subscriber special, I would give this blaster a thumbs up. I'd say, check it out, because like, you don't come across stuff like this every day, especially not nowadays where it's like either 100% gimmicky or 100% practical and there's no leeway in between, especially now that blasters are starting to get way more expensive and it's like an investment for every purchase that you make. Things like this are getting harder to find for reasonable prices. So if you would like to get a Doomlands Judge, I will try to link one in the description. I don't know if you can still buy these anymore. But with that said, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're new, like if you enjoyed, and comment down below what do you think of the Doomlands The Judge and or any other blasters that you'd like me to review in the future. I will see y'all next time. Bye.